Okay, so being a poor child, you can't really afford games, obviously. I mean, my family wasn't necessarily poor, I just hated asking for things. I know, such a noble child. Please, please, calm down. Stop the applause. Stop! But the one advantage I had over those boomer-ass millennials who grew up uh, before the pre-height of the internet uh, was the amount of free indie games. Obviously, more than enough people have talked about Flash games on this platform. It's, it's the go-to nostalgia genre to hit on, uh, acknowledging nostalgia, if you will. That's the plug! That's the plug! Please go watch the video! I've talked about this in slight variations in other videos that kind of relate to this topic, but I don't think I've ever actually spoken on the specific games and the difficulty we had finding good free-to-play ones. The main reason I'm making this video anyways is because I've been re-watching a bunch of old Pyrocynical videos and I, I just watched this one today uh, that he made on Cry of Fear. If you've never heard of it or seen his video on it, I don't, you know, blame you because it's, it's kind of a niche game. But I seriously recommend that you watch it. It's like two hours long, so it's definitely a commitment. But if you enjoy those in-depth and kind of meme video essays, I can't believe I just said the word meme. Uh, <laughs> it's an amazing video to start with. But I remember Cry of Fear pretty fondly, actually. I never understood the story or really even tried. I was like 14 to 15. But at that age, I had no money, and I always wanted to make YouTube videos. So I would try to find any game that was free that had at least any type of play value in it whatsoever. You name the free-to-play game, and I've at least heard of it. And if not heard of it, I've played it and made a video on it. I went through all of the effort to get Hamachi servers set up and all of my high school friends on it. And actually, the gameplay you're watching right now is from a video that I made on it. What? What? No! No! Help! Help! There's another one! Are you? Oh, you're insane! But in my life, there have been two types of these free-to-play games. You had the ones from before I had a computer, so I'd just be on the Xbox playing those crappy Avatar Online indie games. Not crappy in the lack of effort, but just not any type of AAA experience or any original experience. Or the ones on PC platforms. I actually, I remember this video that Call Me Carson made a year or two ago where him and his friend were reviewing PC setups and they kept seeing these ones where kids were just making it work. Okay, wait, respect first of all. I respect this hard, okay? I love this it. Is, this is some shit I would have when I was like 14 or 15 and I'm on that fucking grind trying my best but I have no money, right? So first of all, shout out, you've put together some shit. Like, dude, I see the tape to make sure that the wire's in. It was that weird feeling that I got, you know, kind of understanding it and understanding how far that my space has come. And I guarantee you there are some people that would definitely agree with me. I don't like showing my face on uh, YouTube or anything, but oh my God, look at that hair. Look at, look at the fucking chair I'm sitting on, dude. <laughs> that was my grandfather's. I don't even know what year it was made. Oh my God. It used to not be about personalization. We didn't have the money for that. We just wanted to get our setups to work. We wanted to be like those YouTubers we watched, whether it was using something that wasn't a mouse pad as a mouse pad, or using your dad's crappy Logitech mouse that was way too small for your hand, or that crappy headset that you bothered your parents for or saved up the money for. I actually remember when I got my first graphics card, it was three years into using my computer. I still had a beat up old Dell computer with onboard graphics. It, it sucks that I gave the thing to a girlfriend that I had, but I'll never forget that thing, and I'll never forget putting that card into that computer for the first time. I had never seen any game run that fast other than on YouTube videos. 60 FPS wasn't something that I was used to. If I was lucky, I could get most games to work on low settings at a stable 42 FPS, which was abysmal. That's awful. But it made looking for those games so much more attainable. Tribes Ascend, Blockade 3D, Planet Side 2, Warframe, Warface, etc. I don't know, man. I guess sometimes it just kind of hits me that I'm not that dumb kid who was infatuated by what I didn't know anymore. Until recently, everywhere I worked, I was called a baby. I was just this young kid who was super naive and, and I never really believed it until now. I sit here saying all of this from a desk actually made for a computer and not for an office from the 1960s. A desk filled with personal items, not stuff that <laughs> was barely holding it all together. Like a microphone taped to a headset. I used to actually wear two headsets, 
One so that I could actually hear the game, and one so that I could reward my voice and my friends could hear me. But funny enough, I'm still using the same LCD TV from when I had a shitty laptop that was barely usable for like two years. A keyboard I've had since I was 16 and a mouse model I haven't changed in years. I actually remember being on vacation with my dad when I was younger. I was finally allowed to bring that laptop that I had, and I stayed up all night, almost every night, trying to find and play free-to-play games on Steam. I just watched the download slowly get to 100% with the biggest smile on my face. Now, it's hard to find games in general that are fun. I don't really know where I'm going with all of this. This is kind of like the trope of the end of every one of these little talk videos I make, kind of like video essay format. I wanted to start this video to talk about these old games that I had to spend hours finding that were free so that my friends and I could try to play and make videos, and now I'm talking about setups. But in a weird way, it all kind of ties together. The experiences go hand in hand. As cringy as it is to say, it's kind of like a gamer's coming of age story. Every one is a little different from one another, but still same enough for all of us to uniformly say, yeah, those were some days. Okay, well, thank you for watching. Sorry this video is getting out a little later than usual, even though there aren't really many people watching it, and most of you guys are my actual friends in real life, which I just have to say, uh, fuck you. I don't know why, but it's there. Take it if you want. Um, if you could leave a like and a comment, uh, that'd be amazing. And uh, with all of that, I think I'm going to go shower now.